This technology has transformed everything. When you empower the kids, it allows them to see themselves in a multitude of ways that weren't there before. Those are my grandkids. That's my son. And that's my wife. She's spicy, but she's nice. And that's me, Ricardo. And this is a life no one thought I could have. Forest Haven was an institution for many of us with development disabilities. Everyone that came here went through a court process. Um, the, uh, it was a process, I think it was called commitment. Many came in not knowing what clothes. They figured just let them stay naked or wear pajamas. That was their way of working with us. It was difficult for the people working there. They were not trained in helping the individual become more helpful to themselves. I will never forget, as a young graduate student, I took a walk around the grounds at Forest Haven and I walked up to this chain link fence and I watched a staff person bring out about 20 women who were completely naked and then watched that person hose them down. Hose down is not unusual. You would see them, they sit there, they have a towel set over a chair and they sprinkle them with the hose. It was the most dehumanizing experience I think I've ever seen and maybe ever since. There's a lot of bodies here that laid the rest in peace. On that side that we used to see them and drop a set of bodies down, we had to be pallbearers. That was a sacrifice that she made. And then down here is where my sister, Earlene, is buried. She had her good days and she had bad days. She had days that were very dark that she wouldn't tell a lot of people. She passed in one of the cottages and uh, they said she had had a heart attack. I don't think it was a heart attack, I think that it was something else they didn't want me to really know. I know a couple of times when I seen her, she was drugged up to the point where she couldn't even touch her legs. The medicine was just that bad. There was no investigation. There's no one to tell. There's no one to say, oh, the psychologist made a big mistake. They drugged her, but I couldn't say that because I didn't know. But I was very sad that and I said I would advocate for change. And that won't happen to anyone else. I was exposed to Special Olympics in 1971. I was doing track and field, and I was fast. I was good. Special Olympics helped him become part of a community because he was associating with people who were not from the institution. Love Special Olympics, and the reason why I love it, um, it didn't give me about my disability. It just gave me my ability to do the best I can. And I got my first gold medal. Awesome. Took it back to Forest Haven. He did learn a lot from Special Olympics, but he also wanted it. He wanted to change. A lot of people was talking about Ricardo, and I said to myself, oh, that's Ricardo Thornton. I said, wow, he nice looking. And I said to myself, mm-hmm, I'm gonna keep my eye on him. Donna, oh, she's so spicy. But <laughs> well, she proposed to me. I told her, I said, we're gonna to talk to our social workers to see what they say. There were questions as to whether two people who had been diagnosed with a cognitive disability should be permitted to be married, mostly because they had been in Forest Haven. They were talking, bashing group homes, bashing institutions, bashing people with disabilities. And what I did was I testified, and I gave my best testifying down there. I told my story and um, invited them to come out to a handicapped wedding. Come to the wedding. Come see what we can do. And what I loved about the wedding was that we had people with disabilities in the wedding. Their marriage and the success of their marriage has been a major factor in helping people understand that folks should be given opportunities. And along the way, like everybody, they've had their challenges. So we challenge getting married, having children, having a car, doing everything <laughs> a normal person has. They are profoundly normal. The things that they do are the things that everybody else takes for granted. 
They changed the lives of many people by the way that they changed their own lives. I want people to know that my past is that I lived in the institution. The only thing about Forest Haven and being in a jail is that we don't have bars. It's just that we were able to grow and develop some skills to help us. Special Olympics had an O, and their O is to let me win. But if I can not win, let me be brave in the attempt. And I think showing my braveness, I can open up doors for others with disabilities. And that's my determination with that, is to take that there and to show them what I can do. Ricardo is very outspoken. He never should have lived in a place like Forest Haven. I still got it. <laughs> Honey, you think I still got it? No. Oh. Not now, you don't. He's become such an accomplished advocate that it's hard not to be incredibly impressed by what he's been able to do. Hopefully I can continue to motivate others. That's what I want people to recognize. I did something, I made a difference, and I hope they will join us to do the same.